that's one that we don't recommend for beginners, anything in that family, because until you've trained yourself to see the right kinds of patterns on the plant, you'll gloss over them and you might make mistakes. Welcome to the gritty, the raw, the real. This is the Farm to Table Direct Show on the road. Why is this table sitting here, Stuart? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, I'm Stuart. So, like, like you said, um, um, in a situation where you would want to get some food, it's good to know how to identify things around you, um, especially during certain times of the year. You know, obviously in winter, you're not going to find very much. But there are certain times of the year where you will find lots of wild edibles, wild spinach, lamb's quarter, um, a number of things that you can gather up, whether it's uh, seeds or grains um, from plants or leaves that you can harvest. So the typical person would say, "Man, I would really like to watch that." And so they're gonna, they're gonna, or they're gonna, they want to learn about it. So they would like go to a YouTube video, or maybe they'd buy a book, and yeah. they would sit down and read about all these different plants, and then they would hope to get lucky enough that when they walked around, <laughs> those things, that yeah. they would be able to right. pick up on those things. Right. But I think that that could be a little overwhelming. For sure, yeah, it is because finding one that is specific just to your backyard is going to be a little bit tricky. Right. There are some awesome books out there that will help you. But also, if you've never done it, it's like learning a new language. So even if you've learned a foreign language, that might give you an up, like where there's some transfer. Mm -hmm. So you learn, say, Spanish. Um, you learn how to learn that language, right? So you have to learn how to learn to identify plants or mushrooms. But once you've learned how to identify plants, then you can take some of those same skills, even though it's a different subject, and apply that to learning mushrooms or trees or anything like that. So it's really helpful, though, to have somebody to walk you through that when you're first learning to identify plants. You want to tell them about why kind of we learned yeah, a little sure. bit? And about it? Sure. So this isn't required to learn individual plants. You know, you, there are ways to learn the characteristics and you identify a plant. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but in this case, this is the patterns method of identification for learning plant families. And so um, plants are grouped into large families based on similar characteristics. And so uh, what you would do is you'd learn to identify those characteristics. For example, um, we all know what a cactus looks like, you know. So if I say picture a cactus. What do you think, Keith? What do you, what do you think? I describe, I'm, I'm thinking saguaro, like the big cactuses that you see yep. in in Arizona. Yeah, so what what what, what are some what do you features think? on like, the what, yeah. does it look like? Okay, it, it it looks like something straight up and some arms that are coming out on the and side. It's on the surface. Uh, very prickly things that you, <laughs> there you probably go. don't want to touch. Right. Thorny. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so that's a cactus, right? And so um but there are many different types of cactus, right? There's tiny little cactus and there's different shapes of cacti and, and so forth, but they all are um, spiny uh, succulent plants. You have to to the plant section and you can recognize a cactus that's not a super right? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> and because cactus, that's a family of plants. And so they have similar characteristics. Right. So like if we look in this book, you can see, here's the cactus family. I don't know that you'll be able to see it super awesome in that video that far back, but yep. you get the idea. It's got this in here, and it's you can get closer, you. camera person, yeah, if you, you want. In close yeah. and Zoom in on that. There you go. That's, That's good. And there we go. Some of the features on there. Cool. And so, uh, yeah, you can identify it by looking at the pictures, right. which is right up my alley. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can say that this would be one that sticks with me. Right. Sticks. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so, so, so that that family of plants is pretty easy to identify, right? And the, this book has about 200 plant families, and so simple characteristics of patterns. A lot of it has to do with the number of parts on the flowers themselves, mm -hmm. because plants that have similar flowers, they have similar reproduction. They're in the same plant families. So once you learn to identify those basic things, whether it's leaf structure or um, the pattern on the flowers, then you can put what family it goes in. The advantage to that is that um, once you know what family a plant is in, they have similar properties. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, if you know that a plant is in the mustard family, like say you've learned to identify mustard family plants, you go, hey, I know that all mustard family plants are edible. And so now they're not all going to agree with you necessarily, but you can you can taste it and see, hey, do I like this one or not? And uh, you know, once you can effectively group a, a, um, a plant family, you know it's going to have you know similar either edibility or or medicinal properties 
to other plants in that same family. If you play you, an instrument? Yeah. Do you do you? Play, yeah. I do. What do you what play? Do you play? Drums. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, you could hear a great, you know, great background, some percussion in a rock song or whatever, and you could learn, memorize how to play it. That'd be like learning an individual plant. It's got a pattern. I got a pattern to it that yeah. you can memorize. So. Right. Yep. And so, um, there are certain things that I've just picked up on, like mustards, mm -hmm. that you know that all of that family at least won't kill you, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> right. And so, you know if you can identify those certain patterns in it, then mm -hmm. You can identify it in the wild, even if you've never never Absolutely. seen it on your own property. Right. You know. Yeah. As an example of that, like uh, mint family plants, you know, your spearmints and peppermints and lemon balm and you know all that. They they have like a few main identifying characteristics. Like they have square stems, so the stem that's growing up is in a square shape, and then their leaves are opposite each other on the stalk, just straight out opposite from each mm -hmm. other, and they alternate at these 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then it's usually aromatic, and so it, it smells good, you know, it's got that aroma, strong, um, whether it's menthol or whatever um, mm -hmm. aroma it has, those are the three main properties for mint family plants. And so that pattern is overlaid on <clears throat> on about three and a half thousand so species. This is mint. These are different species of mint, yeah, yeah. something yeah. is the family. So. The square, and then it's got the leaves that's sticking yeah. out. Yeah, it's like, like, like your arms instead of like yeah, fingers. Yeah, like that. Get that and be sure you don't miss that part. Arms, yeah. like across from each other. This is that's the opposite. opposite. That's right. This is the alternate. Kind of I like think you missed your calling as a dancer, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe an elementary teacher, I don't know. <laughs> yes. That'll do it, too. Square, st uh, square stems, opposite, opposite leaves. leaves. Generally aromatic. So... Smells, it has a strong smell. Yeah. So if you've got a plant that's got all three of those characteristics, you're dealing with a mint. There are some mints that don't have all three of those characteristics, but if you find a plant that does, then you know, okay, this is a mint. Yeah. I can safely taste this. If I like this, I can work with it more. Penny Royal is one that you're not going to want to ingest a lot of. It can be really damaging, but it also tastes really bad, and it's not very common. So that would be the only mint to be careful about here in the United States. Um, so, I should, wild, so not only should I learn that, but I should learn what not to yeah. To eat yeah, that family, right? Uh, yeah, so that would be the only only one really in that okay. whole family. Now, some of the other families have a lot of tricky members that are dangerous. Um, so that would be like your uh, carrot family or parsley family, whichever one you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, because we've got two of the most deadly plants in the United States in that family. So we've got poison hemlock and water hemlock. Those are both in the carrot family. So any wild plant that looks like a carrot, you're going to want to be careful with. So. That's good to know. Yeah, it's really, really good. I would have probably said, this looks like a carrot. It might be mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the yeah. case. There are a number of toxic carrot family plants. Um, so that's one that we don't recommend for beginners, anything in that family, because until you've trained yourself to see the right kinds of patterns on the plant, you'll gloss over them and you might make mistakes. You know, you said that it's not always available. Right. Like in like in I guess in the coldest part of winter it's just not actually in the coldest part of winter there's still some really good food available uh, that's growing or it has grown so we're talking um, there are still berries that persist on different plants um, rose hips in particular in our area are going to be here all year round um, and then we've got pine needles which is really high in vitamin C so great even if it's not a ton of calories that you're getting in, you're going to get the nutrition. So you're going to avoid getting scurvy or all of these other kinds of things that happen when you don't have access to good quality food. Um, but all of the nuts and um, pecans, walnuts, uh, acorns, all of those things you should be able to find throughout the winter in varying quantities. So there's definitely options. And also when you're talking about gathering your food from the wild, you're not just talking about plants and mushrooms, which is what we focus on. Um, but we also partner with other people that talk about trapping animals, um, fishing, all of those kinds of things are also ways to supplement your food, especially if you've got a backyard flock of chickens or rabbits or quail or something like that, that you're using to supplement, then, you know, adding to it just a little bit makes a huge difference nutritionally in what you Right. What you have. And, so. I, and I wanted to mention in regard to the, the wild foods, we also have persimmons here in our part of Oklahoma. We have persimmons growing on our property. And those are a, you know, they really don't ripen up, um, all of them, until there's a good 
frost, like a good cold spell, and then a lot of them drop from the trees. And so persimmons are an excellent uh, treat as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, then, uh, and also the, the tubers of certain plants, you know, yeah. so they send their carbohydrates, their energy down at the roots during winter. And so a lot of those can be harvested as well and, uh, you know, either cooked up or used in medicine in various ways. Yeah. So even throughout all the year, there's something available yeah. that you can work with. Yeah. So, Incredible Wild Edibles, all, um, Forge with Harvest and Nature's Garden. Um, that's uh, Samuel Thayer. He's written these three books, and he's worked with all these plants. He's an excellent author. <laughs> and this isn't, like, necessarily a... Uh, like It's not a recipe book or anything like that, but he shows you, like, here's when to harvest it. He's, you know, like I said, he's he's gone out to the woods for, you know, 30 days at a time just as a challenge, and I'm only going to eat what I forage out in the forest, and he's done it. Wow. And, you know, it takes time, it takes uh, skill, know-how, and so forth, but he, you know, you have the peace of mind that this guy knows what he's talking about. And he just compiled the largest one ever compiled in these, North America. These only cover 30 plants. Each. Yeah, yeah. And they're super intense. Yeah, each one, yeah. Each one of these covers, it's by the same author. Yes. One, two, three. Yeah. And they cover 30 plants each. This would be more of a reference book for me. This one is, yeah. if you're going to get a guidebook that cover, would cover you, no matter where you are in the country, this is it. Um, it is the most comprehensive one that's ever been written. It has a couple hundred more plants than any other guidebook out there. Mm -hmm. And every forager that I know respects this guy that wrote it. So. Apparently. I don't see how he has any time to identify anything because he's <laughs> written so many books yeah, to find so, the time. Right. But, it's, uh, it's been a labor of love, this one. Samuel Thayer right. is his name. And I'll send you our link tree, but we've got all of these in our Restoration Farms Amazon store. Yeah. Too, so. yeah, he looks like a guy that's pretty smart, a guy <laughs> that I would listen to, you know. Wow. So that one is really awesome. So not super in depth. So the difference, that one, these ones are going to be super in depth. You're going to know everything you need about to know those about plants. those plants and yep. how to work with them. Like there'd be no qualms. Like you could pick an acorn and be like, okay, I know what to do. I'll follow the steps in here. I can make this safe for me to eat and I can make something that tastes good. Right. Um, this one is, is way less in depth, but you still will know what parts to use and you know, the general stuff. Um, for any plant, basically. You know how many plants are in there? Uh, like 700 something? More than 700, yeah. 700, yeah. About so, it's species. also, one cool feature is it's got the range maps. So right. these right. aren't necessarily all in our area of Oklahoma, but you can look at the maps and it'll show you where they are in the country. We're the ones in the blue. Yes. <laughs> this particular map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so like this one. Right. Tells you. Mm -hmm. Tells you where it is in the country. Right. So. And I think I read something on back there and you guys were just mentioning it's uh, 634 range maps in here mm -hmm. that are illustrated, which is pretty nice because at least you know your what areas to focus on, right? Yes, exactly. And then over 700 edible species. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important thing to me is 2,000 color photos, <laughs> right? Yep. So and kind of in between, between those, uh, if you're in our area of eastern Oklahoma, um, or Arkansas, or uh, southeastern Kansas, or Missouri, is the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. um, Forging the Ozarks by Bo Brown. He's out of Missouri, also been doing this for decades, knows exactly what he's talking about. His is kind of an in-between between the two in-depth ones, um, so it'll have a, it has some good pictures, good description, but he also has recipes in here, mm -hmm. um, so you can work with it. Uh, it's not super, super in-depth. It covers more plants than these 30 ones. Um, but, yeah, he's local, and it'll cover your basic basic stuff that's going to be in our area. He does have a grasslands one also that came out in August. I just don't have a copy of it yet. So, um, But, yeah, Bo Brown, Foraging the Ozarks, or uh, Foraging the Central yeah, Bo Brown from here? Or Missouri. He's from Missouri. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of lives here, so yep. Yep, it's okay. Exactly. He can tell you what's here. Yeah. It's qualified. Yeah, so, and he, and he, for his Central gra Grasslands books, he, I mean, he's traveled all through this area and, and experimented. And then uh, his, his other book that just came out, I guess there's more recipes even in there. So if you're not sure, like, how to work with it, like you understand, but you're like, what, what is this going to taste good? And you need a recipe. You can't just take a mm -hmm. plant and 
throw it in. Um, the recipes are really helpful for people that need a little bit more assistance working with them. So I like them. Bo Brown is a pretty solid guy. Going to get into that a little yes. bit today. Yeah, where you're going to walk me around and see if there's anything at the, in this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're we're here in uh, October. Yeah, late yeah. October. Late yeah. October. So we'll we'll see what we can find a little bit later. And I'm looking forward to that because that's a little bit of hands-on that I yeah, exactly. See, so, yeah, that's know. what we would do if you were in person. Yeah, yeah. We you can see we it. We do what Keith and he gets to yeah. he gets to uh, touch and taste and smell and stuff. You people yeah. watching. You know, you'd have to have us come out to work with you to do that. You'll miss out on some of that experience, but you'll get to see Keith do that. Right. And so um, I'm looking forward to that part. Is there something else on here that we really need to talk about?